Welcome back to Taival Outdoors. My name is Joel. That's my dog Rocca, the Alaskan Malamute. And today is Finnish Nature Day. And that of course means that it is time for the annual overnight challenge that is issued to all Finns. Why not to everyone, regardless of where you live? But basically Finns are encouraged to camp the night outdoors, or at least outside. That is exactly what we are doing today. We are on this short, but I guess still relatively unknown nature trail. And our hopes are, of course, that we are the only ones here. This nature trail goes through protected area or nature conservation area, which means that we cannot camp here, but of course we can camp right outside of this area then when the time comes tonight. The plan for tonight is to have fun with Trangia and attempt to make a pizza or two actually, and then afterwards tonight will be my first ever night in a hammock. And for you hammock campers out there, I guess my setup will be a bit unorthodox, but I think it will work, <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Now. We are still following this trail, as it should lead us on top of those rocks to a place where there should be some nice views. There's the highest point. We actually skirted around it because the sun is blazing. We are trying to find a bit of shade, maybe go somewhere down there. But the views aren't bad from here either. But yeah, as you can hear, it is hot for Rokka. Sure, it's hot for me as well. So let's get some shade. I think it was worth the extra minute to look for a good spot. I have a really nice place there. Good, <laughs> well, I, I could say wind block in case there would be any wind, but as of now, absolutely nothing. But anyway, nice place for me to lay down and make some dinner. And Rokka is here in complete shade of these rocks, but it is warm. It is supposed to be the last hurrah of this summer, last warm weekend. Next week the temperatures will plummet around 10 degrees actually. So bring on the autumn, bring on the winter in fact. I'm looking forward to that already, but... <sighs> oh yeah, today, tomorrow it is still summer. Now you might have been wondering why or oh why does he have such a massive backpack with him if he's going to sleep here only for one night anyway. Well, you are right to ask that. But this is just part of my ongoing testing of this 511 Rush 100 backpack. It has 60 liters of capacity, so clearly more than enough for one night trip. And I do have my whole sleep system, so the hammock setup and everything just stuffed in here, to the bottom compartment without any compression sacks or anything. And of course I do have dogs stuff and some filming gear and whatnot in the front here. And inside of this you can see quite a bit of space, but I think it's time to get cooking. 
here should be everything I need for a simple pizza and of course drink for tonight olive oil just in case extra water for tomorrow morning in total I have four liters which probably is um, probably could have gone with five to be honest it is such a hot day but we'll make it work and I do have the full Trangia kit here, which of course is ridiculously big. But other than that, completely empty. And of course, yeah, a bit of change of clothes for tonight, but that's about it. Might look like a lot, but not really. It's just a, the shape of the backpack sort of is a bit misleading in this context. But let's get cooking. So let's see, maybe this was a bad idea to just shove everything into the same bag, but <laughs> maybe not. This will be my trash bag anyway. Oh, well there we go. I think there's plenty for two pizzas here. Like so. All right, not my finest work, but it will do. Around half, I guess that's that's half, right? It's starting to look like a pizza at least. Then the main ingredient straight out of this German or NATO e tool pouch. Sweet and hot or teriyaki. I think I'll go for teriyaki. Mm. Quite nice. No pepperoni, but beef jerky will have to do. Have you ever done beef jerky pizza? This is the first for me as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then of course every pizza needs some cheese. I brought two bags of cheese because I didn't know how much I need. I guess you can never have enough. There we go. And I figured this is way too hot for this to cook in any sensible manner, so let's put the limiter on. Mmm, cheese and tomato. Here we go. All right, moment of proof. I think it is done. And this is exactly why I have these gloves, or actually the only reason why I have these gloves with me, so I can handle hot pans and things. Let's close this off. This little Trangia burner is actually quite fuel efficient when the limiter is on, but of course the downside is that it is then quite slow as well, so this whole thing took way longer than I expected, so if I am going to make another one, then I will try out with without the limiter and see how it goes. Oh. Actually, it is nice and crispy. It tastes remotely like a pizza. Hmm. Fohawk. A bit of nature apparently included. No. Oh. Pizza on a Trangia can be done. Pizza number two.
still good. The sun is setting that way and once I'm done here and we've cleaned up this place, we're going to continue somewhere to that direction outside of the protected area. Which means that the shadows will hit that part of the hill first. So we are losing daylight. It is no midsummer anymore after all, so trying to stay mindful of that fact. All right, place is cleaned up. It's like we never even were here. But talking about leaving no trace, there would be plenty of good camping and hammocking spots around here. And I'm sure we all understand that if I would camp here, I wouldn't harm the nature and nobody would ever know that I would have been here. But, but the rules are rules and they are here for a reason. Most forest areas in Finland can be camped at according to our every man's rights, but some areas are protected for one reason or another. The unfortunate fact is that if this area wouldn't be protected, I'm sure that people would come here because of the nice views and whatnot and absolutely trash this place. And because of those people, we then have rules that limit everyone. But that's how it goes regarding all rules and probably most laws as well. There are always those idiots that ruin the fun for the rest of us. But enough ranting, let's find ourselves a good spot to camp then outside of this area. I think this is it. We are just outside of the protected area, but still quite high up. I can see the hill rolling down there and I think there is a field of some sort down there as well. And I would like to stay a bit higher up because I think it's going to be quite humid during the night and some mist and fog and whatnot will collect then uh, to lower elevations. So my thinking is that if we stay up here, maybe set up between this and these three, then we should not be absolutely soaked in the morning because of the humidity. Zero cloud coverage, so I don't think it's going to rain tonight, but this looks good. Let me show you this map. So to the west of us is the protected area and starting from right about where you are. This is the common folks area. <laughs> so let's set up shop then. Like I said, my whole sleep system is down here. No compression sacks or anything. And indeed, this will be my first night in a hammock. So let me set up the basics and then walk you through what I have on my mind. All right, so here it is. I don't know why it wants to sit a bit like this instead of this. Um, that's just one of the things which I'm not familiar with because I don't really do hammocking. This hammock itself is the most basic ticket to the moon single person hammock. Did not buy this for this trip. This is something that has been at the side of our yard for two or three summers now. So just a place to take a nap during the summer. And now the first step in putting my system together is something which I believe is a bit of a no-no, or at least many hammock campers, as far as I know, don't do this, but I definitely want to do this. So <laughs> putting a sleeping pad there. This is the bigger version of the Thermarest Ridge Rest. And I wanted a bigger version because I'm a taller guy. But then I did cut 
maybe this much out of the sides to make it like a standard width because the normal width for this larger ridge rest model is absolutely ridiculous and if you set it up to your rucksack like I had today in mind like hanging there it would stick out like crazy on both sides long piece of a sleeping pad but not that wide let's see if it can sort of balance things out and then provide a bit of a wind block and warmth I have this Tuco Systems hybrid blanket so this is not right now an underquilt which is a concept I find a bit silly anyway <laughs> Uh, but it's not really a sleeping bag in the sense that it would be inside of here. So I think this combines the good of both. So it does hang down here when I go inside, providing that underside warmth and of course blocks the wind as well. The toe box is a bit open and it will be a bit open when I zip it up all the way because the strings to pull this tight are actually underneath here but other than that i've tested this setup i do fit inside quite nicely actually but i haven't slept in it and i'm really looking forward how this setup performs if you're interested in this is actually the lighter version of the said hybrid blanket and it is also meant to be used as an underquilt but i don't think this was the intended use when they came up with this design but it's big enough, uh, so I guess it works. <laughs> Learning new skills and testing new stuff. That's, that's what this is all about. If you're wondering about me not having a bug net, if you're not, the plan is to wear my old, old mosquito jacket. I usually just run the mosquito head net, but yeah. Keeping the cap on and this. I do have this grid fleece in case it does get cold during the night, which it might during the final hours before sunrise, it might get a bit chilly. Um, I have no idea how warm that setup is, so just in case, I will keep this close by. And before climbing in there for the night, I will of course take off the pants and put on this quite thin synthetic base layer long johns at first i'm sure this will be uh quite warm but as the night progresses and temperatures drop down a bit i think it will be nice to have something like this so pretty basic setup no shelter that's enough of blabbering for tonight i think i will just lay down and relax for the rest of the evening <laughs> Good night. Good morning. As you maybe can tell, this is not a hammock. <laughs> There's the hammock. Good morning, Rokka. I woke up around four or five and actually I had a bit of a back pain. Um, changed position or as much as you can in the hammock and I started to hear this strange sound. And it took a while, but I did pinpoint it to this. So like I think I said yesterday, this hammock has been by our yard for a few summers now. And of course, it's there the whole summer. So through all the weather and if it's windy and, and whatnot, the hammock takes the brunt of it. And I guess due to all that, and of course, 
um, UV radiation and things like that had degraded the hammock so much that now that I'm I actually was on it for many hours it started to fail but gladly it failed slowly and I got off before it crashed That's, that that would have been quite an unpleasant wake up in the middle of the night but good thing I had the pad so I just threw it down there and used the hybrid blanket as a sleeping bag and slept better on the ground to be honest I don't know how you hammock guys do it. Um, I just felt in this one that I was completely cramped and shoulders rounded all the time and, and, and so forth. But then again, I know nothing about hammocks. Maybe this thing is just um, too small for me to begin with. But like I suspected, there is quite a bit, I'm not sure if it captures on camera, but quite a bit of fog down there. Humidity definitely has been rolling through these hills and downwards. Uh, all my gear has a bit of moisture on top of it. Everything is just a bit damp, but nothing too crazy. And I think... I think we will start packing our things and heading uphill again. Let's go check out that scenic spot and have a nice breakfast with you. And here we are, <laughs> but of course, not much of a view because of the mist. <sighs> well, not a bad spot, nevertheless. We have a nice table here, it's a bit of a breeze which does make things easier. And uh, remnants of an illegal fireplace, of course, as always. But I'm sure we can have one nice breakfast here anyway. Good morning hike coming up the hill. Woo. Good way to save some space. Put your coffee grounds inside your coffee pot for transport. Some things never change, one of them being, of course, good old morning protein oatmeal. Mm, yeah, seems about right. that simmer there for a while. So, the old tried and true recipe. One deciliter of protein powder, 
one deciliter of oatmeal, quick oatmeal. Mm. Works every time. Now that the sun really came up and started warming again quite a bit, <clears throat> I can actually see some shapes. I think there's a little island emerging from the fog. It's kind of cool seeing that right in front of your eyes so happening in kind of a fast forward motion. This should be Baltic Sea right there, but right now there is nothing. There's a sea of fog, but maybe, maybe soon we will see something. Sun will clear up that misty morning and we'll get nice views on our hike back down from here. Coffee in the woods. Is there anything better? Probably not. It is getting hot and humid down here, but I do see water, or at least fog. Tuparakkailas. <laughs> Good looking day coming up. There starts to be some duckboards again, which means that we are closing on the end of this loop trail and micro adventure. It was good to be back sleeping outside for a change. As I said in the live stream, I've been a bit busy being a dad recently, more than I have been before. So that's why I haven't been, well, I've been Enjoying my share of outdoors, but haven't been sleeping outside, but this was a good thing, although the hammock did fail, but I guess that's just the universe telling me that Joel and hammocks don't match, and that's completely fine. As you all know, I'm more of a tarp guy anyway, sleeping on the hard ground with barely any shelter <laughs> all year round. And that's probably the way to go now moving forwards. Next big trip is happening this fall. Hopefully I get to be around one week a bit further up north. Planning on making at least one video of that trip. But more of that than later. Thanks all for being with us. You've been watching Tavel Outdoors. My name is Joel. This has been Rokka, the Alaskan Malamute. And I guess we both will see you all in that next adventure, if not sooner. Cheers.